as a rock I will build my church And the gates of hell Shall not prevail I'll tell you, this is a house of liberty Thank you. The Bible says where the Spirit of God is There, we there is liberty So on tonight, let's stand to our feet we're going to get ready today and tonight look, looking to God for this, this woman of God. Oh, yeah. Beautiful woman of God. Oh, you got to, to know her is to love her. And I thank God for her. Thank God for what he has done in her life. Thank, thank you, God Lord. for what he's yet doing in her life. Yeah. I thank God for uh, the, how the enemy say God on you women. We found out the devil is a liar. Yes, and we thank God for this woman of God on tonight. Asking God to just have his way in her heart. Her. And we're going to introduce to some and present to other sister, Lady Lisa King. Hallelujah. Give God a praise for her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank God for you. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Come on, don't let the praise stop. Hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, it is. So we thank God for being in his house tonight, being in his presence tonight. Thank God for all of you that made it. Thank God for those that he's going to bring. Thank God for those that desire to be here and couldn't make it tonight. Yes. God is such a good God and he is yes. worthy of our praise. Yes, no is. matter what you've gone through, no matter what you're experiencing, God is worthy to be praised. And all he wants is for us to delight in him. Delight yourself in him, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And we're glad about being in this place tonight. We're going to look away to him. Lord, we thank you for being here on a Friday night. God, you chose us to be here. It's not by chance, but we are here according to your purpose. And we thank you for choosing us tonight to be in the building. We thank you for the mind to press and to strive. We could have chosen to be other, do other things and be other places, but Lord, you gave us a desire to be in your house. So we ask you to let us be filled tonight. Let our cups overflow. You know every need of everybody that will listen in, whether it's by internet or that's in the building. God, meet every need tonight. Fill the longing soul, those that are looking for a better way. Draw them unto yourself. Let them know that it's you that's missing in their lives. Let them taste of you and just see how good you are so that they can come to know the benefits that's in you. So we look to you tonight to have your way. Word in my mouth, God. Give me to speak as your oracles that it be an edification to those that were here. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Come on, give God. Give God. Give God. Give it to God tonight. Is that your best clap? Is that your best praise? Is that your biggest smile? God is good. There's none like him. You can be seated. I thank God. Look, we want God's best, and guess what? He wants the best from us. And you just have to know that you can give it to him. You know, he's, done, he's been so good. All of us have a testimony. If you look back over your life and you think things over, like the songwriter said, I can truly say I have been blessed and I have a testimony. And I thank God for the enemy will try to take your testimony. But hold to your testimony. Those things that God have done for you, as pastor has been teaching us here for some time now about the altars, these monumental points in our lives. Those are things when you're going through your test, when you're not feeling your best. When your body, when you're aching and going through things, when your heart feels like you can't take anymore, when you feel overwhelmed, he wants you to remember those things that he's done for you in time past. That's right. oh, yeah. I thank God for that because the enemy comes with discouragement. Mm -hmm. The enemy comes with disappointment and frustrations. Right. But God don't do that. He'll rejoice your heart. Right. And all he wants you to do is put your mind on him. That's true. No matter what you're going through, shift your attention. Yes. Your thoughts and bring them into captivity. And if it give you strength, think on those things. But if it take from you and you start feeling other type of ways, you start feeling bad, cast that stuff down. Right. Don't hold on to it. Don't meditate on that. Right. He 
said, think on these things, good things that are honest, just, good, lovely, of a good report. Doesn't that sound like God? Like he God. cannot do any wrong. It's impossible. There's no failure in God. Everything he does is good. That's right. So we thank God for being here tonight. We won't be lengthy. I thank God we're going to read these scriptures, expound on them a little bit, and then we'll be out of here. We thank God again. We're going to be in the book of Genesis chapter 32. I thank God for what he's doing. I thank God because there are some exceeding great and precious promises to those that believe in him, that have believed, repented, and have believed on him. There are some promises, even if you haven't, there are some promises that belong to you. You just got to get to know him. And he's going to teach you about the benefits. You're going to learn his ways. You're going to learn his thoughts. You'll learn how to think. You'll learn him. And I'm glad about it tonight. God is so good. So in the book of Genesis, we're going to spot read a little bit. I thank God because we talk a lot about relationship. Mm -hmm. It's very important to have a relationship with the Lord. That's true. Once you repent and turn from the way that you were going and he come into your life, you come into this relationship with him. Yes. And in any relationship, you got to get to know the person. That's right, right. You get to know them because you talk to them, you share things about yourself, and just as you do that, they begin to share things about themselves that they want you to know. That's true. And that's the same way God is. He shares his thoughts. He shares, he wants you to know all about him. He don't keep himself a secret, but he'll reveal himself to you. And so when we begin in this book, we've been talking, we've been in Genesis for a while. Yeah. And I mean, pastors been in Genesis. I think we've all, the teachers in here have been in the book of Genesis. Yeah. But God did some great things in the beginning. Right. It starts with the beginning. Right. And he doesn't change that same God that did it for Abraham, Isaac, right. Jacob, Adam, Eve, all of those that came before us. Is the same God. And so he had promises that he had given to Jacob. But before they were given to Jacob, it was given to his father. His grandfather had the same promises. And guess what? They all had to get to know him. And they were on a journey. Every last one of them. Just like we are today. I want you to compare this to your own life and see that we are all on a journey. And there are a lot of things that you're going to find out. There's some things that you're going to experience that you didn't even realize was going to come your way. But even in these things, God wants a relationship. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to get to know him. And so in Genesis 32, we're going to begin at the first verse. And again, we're going to spot read a little bit. A lot of us may have heard about uh, Jacob and Jacob was uh, the son of Isaac mm -hmm. and Isaac had twins Jacob had a twin brother and their mom and their dad taught them look they were believers their parents were believers mm -hmm. and they were children of God and they had to follow God they had to believe the things that he had given them and so here it go. You can believe that the sons were taught, the children were taught by the parents. Right. If you believe God, guess what? You're going to hand down what you know about him. Right. You're going to teach others what you have learned. And so thank God for, for Jacob and Esau's parents. And so in, first, in the first verse it says, and Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. And when Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's host. Mm -hmm. And he called the name of that place Mahanam. We're going to drop down to verse 5. And I have oxen and asses 
flocks and men servants and woman servants. And I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. Mm -hmm. So before I read any further, what has happened is Jacob is about to meet his brother. The Lord had given him a command to go. And as he went his way, he was going to meet with his brother. And Jacob knew what the conditions and what the situation was the last time he had seen his brother. And so because of what he had gone through, the things that they had experienced as brothers, God had a plan for Jacob and Esau. And in him having a plan, he wasn't afraid of what uh, Esau, he already knew that he had prepared Esau's heart, but Jacob wasn't aware of that yet. See, God don't tell you every little detail because he wants you to walk by faith, which is by what he said. He wants you to walk by what he said and not by sight, not by how you feel, not by how things happen in the past. He wants you to believe so he don't give you all the details so that you can trust in him. And so he didn't tell Jacob about the change that his brother had, but he sent him. And so... This is where we're picking up at. And Jacob went on his way and the angels of God met him. The angels of God. This is what we, this is the type of God we serve. Jacob didn't ask for the angel. God put them angels and said, hey, go meet Jacob. And when Jacob saw them, look, he recognized it. He said, this is God's hosts. Woo! And he called, he named that place. This is God's host. See, when you have a relationship, you recognize God. You know his work. You see those that he has chosen to speak to you, to watch over you. And so in verse 5, it says, and he sent him now, God sent him his way. And what I love about this is Jacob had accumulated a lot of things. And as we always want you to focus on is they didn't even have to ask for these things. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. So in Jacob doing, going through what he went through, it was a, his parents had sent him down to his uncle's house. He didn't want him to pick a wife from where they were. And so he sent him to his uncle's house and there Jacob began to work. And so as he worked, while he was working, God had a whole plan for Jacob. And again, he didn't tell him all the details. He just told him where to go. And out of obedience, he accumulated these things. The uncle just had to give them up, whether he wanted to or not. He had to give them up because this was all a part of God's plan. And so here we are now. Uh, He was about to go meet his brother. And so what Jacob started doing, he came up with his own plan. Mm -hmm. And so he started putting together his plan and saying what he was going to do. And this is where we're picking up. He said, and I have oxen and asses and flocks and men servants and woman servants. And I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find grace in thy sight. Mm -hmm. And so... Let's drop down to verse 9. I'm sorry, I'm spot reading here. And Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham, and God of my father Isaac, the Lord which said unto me, Return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. Who told him this? God is rehearsing what 
mean, Jacob is rehearsing what God had told him. Right. Look, when you are going th through things, encourage yourself with things that God has said. That's right. God had given him a command, and not only a command, but he had given him a promise. And here it is, Jacob is in a dilemma, mm -hmm. and he began to talk to God about it. And so he knew who he was. He said, look, the father, the God of my father Abraham, the God of my father Isaac, and the Lord was said unto me, return unto thy country and to thy kindred, and I will deal well with thee. Now God said this to him. And so in verse 11, he said, deliver me, I pray thee, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him, lest he will come and smite me and the mother of my children. Now, just as quick as he mentioned what God had told him, here he come back rehearsing something that was driven by fear. Right, right. God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. Amen. So if he's given you a promise, hold on to the promise. Don't start speaking contrary to what you just said. God gave you, right? That's right. And so right in that same breath, God bless Jacob. Help him, Lord. <laughs> but he began to say, he said, I fear him. Least he will come and smite me and the mother with my children. Now, God just told him he was going to deal with him. Didn't he give him a, a promise? Yes, he, he said, I'm going to deal with you. Yes. And so in verse 12, he said, and thou hast said, I will surely do good. Do thee good. Look, he back to talking right. <laughs> and thou said, I will surely do thee good and make thy seed as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. And so again, he picked up and he started saying what God said. See, that becomes the test for us. When God has given us promises, he's expecting us to hold on to it. He's expecting us to be mindful of what he said, even when trouble is coming our way. And so then things begin to happen. And he got closer to the place where he was getting ready to meet his brother. And he, he sent some people and then he sent some. He sent some one way and then he sent another group another direction. Mm -hmm. And he did all of this stuff out of fear. God hadn't given him to do it, but he did it out of fear. Right. Because he was worried about if his brother was going to hurt him or not. Right. So then here we're going to pick up at verse 24. Remember, Jacob had a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And that relationship, when you realize, when you have a relationship with somebody, you can go talk to them. That's right. Even when it's trouble going on, in the midst of trouble, you should be able to talk to them because you have a relationship. And it doesn't matter what it is, you can talk to him. When you have a father, don't you feel comfort in talking to your father? Amen. Especially if you have that relationship with him and you say, Lord, look, you know everything anyway. Right. So this is what you told me and I, and, I, and I know what's happening, but this is what you said. And so in verse 24, we're going to pick up where uh, Jacob is about to go about things away. And so in verse 24 it says, And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him unto the breaking of the day. Yes. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. Yes. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joints as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. 
For as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. Let's give God a hand praise for the word. There comes a time, the Bible said, and Jacob was left alone. Oh my. He had a band of people that he could have just hung around. And what I want you all to extract from this is when you are going through things, that's really not the time to get around and try to be busy and stay around everybody. God wants you to get along with him. He wants you to talk to him. That be the problem a lot of times when we going through things. We looking for somebody that we can talk to. That we can vent and get it out when we got a father that sit high and looks low. We got a father that's concerned about us that can move mountains on our behalf. He can do for us what our brother, our sister, our husband, our friends can't do for us. And when you have a relationship with him, he wants you to talk to him. How would you feel if you had a relationship with somebody and they gonna tell everybody else their problems? They don't even talk to you about it. They gonna tell people they can't even help them. Wouldn't you feel some kind of way? God will sit back and watch you and say, mm, they going to everybody but me. They're talking and trusting the words of everybody but me. But God wants that relationship to be so tight, so close. That when you're going through things, he wants you to talk to him. Yes, he does. Amen. Yes, he does. He don't mind you asking questions either. He don't mind. He don't mind. That's true. He don't mind you asking questions. A lot of people don't want, don't ask me nothing. Mm -hmm. All right, he. But he don't mind you asking him questions because he's not intimidated by the questions. He knows that he is the answer. He doesn't just have the answer. He's the answer. And so here it is. Jacob got it. He said, wait a minute. He sent them wives. Look. Because they don't tell them what type of confusion was going on with these wives. Mm -hmm. So he sent them away. Y'all go ahead on. Right. Oh, yeah. And as Jacob was left alone, Jacob began to talk to his father. He had already began to talk to him prior to this. That's, true. Amen. That's what relationship is all about. Yes, yes. And so he began to talk to God. And you can imagine the very things that he said before he began to say it again. He was rehearsing this stuff. He was rehearsing the words that God had promised him. And so he was left alone. When he sent them over, Jacob was alone. And they wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Jacob wanted something from God. He did not like the way that he was. That's right. That's right. Nobody likes feeling fearful if you do something that's wrong. Amen. But nobody likes that spirit of fear because you can feel that. That's true. That's true. That's true. And it'll have you doing strange things. Yes, right. It'll have you speaking against the very thing that God said. Mm -hmm. That's what fear does. And so Jacob began to fight. He wrestled. When people are wrestling, they're tussling. Mm -hmm. Somebody want to win. Right. And here it is. Jacob wanted to win. He wanted to conquer what was happening. That fear that had gripped his heart. Jacob wrestled against that. Mm -hmm. That's what God wants you to do. Yes. When the enemy comes in like a flood. Yes, Don't give in to the thoughts. Don't give in to his ways and start carrying out like him. Right. Go against it. If the enemy is telling you to fear. Be of good courage. 
church. When the enemy try to bring discouragement, mm -hmm. disappointment, don't yield to that. And this is what Jacob was doing here. He did not want that spirit upon him. And you can guarantee he was, when you are full of fear, you're full of worry and anxiety. You're trying to figure this out and make this happen and make this work. And here it is. God just wants you to hold on to what he said. Didn't I tell you I was going to do you good? Haven't I always done right towards you? When you knew, when you didn't know I was there, didn't you come to find out I was right there all the time? That's right. yeah. And Jacob was left alone. A lot of people are afraid to be alone. Mm -hmm. They don't like being alone. Right. And you know what they do? They do everything they can trying to occupy their time because they don't really want to deal with what's really going on. But Jacob got alone. Yes. And in him doing so, he encountered an angel. A man. And he wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Yes, yes. yes. And he wrestled so that the man didn't even prevail. We have the victory over the enemy. We have the victory over him. And God just want to see you fighting. Look, it's a good fight. Mm -hmm. This is a good fight of faith. And God, when you're fighting, you have him in mind. Lord, I want to make it. Lord, I don't want to be like this. I don't want to feel like this. And as you do that, here it is, God watching, and he, he goes smiling. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen a child? And they go to fighting, and they realize that they winning. They get excited about that and they guess what? They'll keep on fighting until they get that person down. I remember and, and, and it's pleasing to the father. It's pleasing to the parent. I remember one year I took my son. I was a single mom and my baby boy lived with me and we went to, we took him to, uh, it was me and another young lady and her children. She had two boys and I had my son with me and we went to Six Flags one year. Mm -hmm. And one of the little boys recognized that my son's father wasn't around, but he had his father. Mm -hmm. And so he asked my son, he said, Lenny, where is your dad? Mm -hmm. And we were just a walking. Now we're in Six Flags and my heart dropped. Because I didn't know how he was going to respond. Sure as I could feel my son looking up at me because he was like, Mom, what do I say? And do you know what he came back and said? He said, my mama is my everything. All right. yeah. I had never told him that. Right. And so because he responded like that, I was saying to myself, yes. Right. Right. That's how God is when you're going through things and you say, my father is taking care of me. He's my everything. He's my way maker. He's my provider. He's my keeper. He's my healer. You say those things and God just go to being rejoicing. He's happy about it. And just as sure as he's delighting in you, he sent you help. And that's what happened. That's what he did for Jacob. He saw Jacob wrestling with that angel. And God was pleased with that. And just as sure as he was pleased, he came and he strengthened Jacob. He gave him just what he needed to face what he had to face. And he still didn't tell him your brother's heart has been changed. See, I'm telling you, he don't want you to cast away your confidence. He wants you to trust him all Way, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what people are saying about you, trust in your father. And I mean, Jacob was fighting. He was wrestling. God loved to see you win in the battle. And as a matter of fact, it's because of him that we win. When you're fighting, don't you can't fight with 
your head down. You can't fight with all your strength and you sad and you crying and mad. Right, right. But fight knowing that you win. Yeah. When you fight having your mind on what he said. Right yes, Have your mind on coming through. Having the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so here Jacob was. Jacob was left alone. Don't be afraid to be alone. That's your time to talk to him. You can tell him everything. Because guess what? He knows already. As parents, don't you know your children? You might not know all the details of what they're going through. But you can almost feel it sometimes. Something ain't right. When they stay away too long, you know something is going on. That's right. That's how God is when you stop talking to him. Mm -hmm. He like, oh no. But he's standing there with his arms stretched out. He's just waiting for you to come to him. Yes. He waiting on you to talk to him. I'm your father. I've been waiting on this. That's right. And so God had already sent Jacob away. And he knew what, was, what he was about to encounter. And in doing so, as Jacob went, God was pleased with him. We know he was pleased because he got a blessing. All right. He got his change. He went from fear to trusting and believing God. My life, the angel told him, the man that he wrestled with said, and thy life is preserved. You have prevailed. Yes, yes. Thank you. And God gave him favor with him and with man. Yes. He had given him favor with his brother even before he knew it. Thank you, Jesus. But the angel ministered. God used this angel to minister to yes, him. Yes, he did. The angel wrestled with him too. Listen. The angel wrestled with him. That's right. That's right. And it got to a point because Jacob wasn't letting go. He was serious about this thing. He was, he wanted to be delivered. He wanted to be free from that situation. Yes. When you're going through things in your mind, I don't care if it's about bills, your children, problems. When you're going through things in your mind and somebody come and free you, don't you feel good? Yes. You're looking for some help. Yes. Jacob wanted some help. Yes, he did. And the thing about it was he went straight to God. He went straight to his father. Yes, yes. That's what he, he didn't talk to them wives about it. Right. Listen, there are just some things that you just got to talk to the Lord about. You got to get along and talk to God. Yes. And that don't necessarily mean you go somewhere and close yourself up in the room. No. Because you could be talking to him in your spirit all throughout the day. Lord, I need some help right here. I need strength. It's not a shame to need help. They said about black people, they said black people don't like asking for help. But you know it's a shame to know you need something and you won't even ask. When somebody has the resources to help you and you won't ask, shame on you. But Jacob wanted some help. He didn't want to stay like that. No, no. And just as sure as he didn't want to be like that, God didn't like that position he was in either. Right. Right. But he took that situation and turned it around yeah. where the enemy thought he had him. See, when, when you're worried and you're full of fear, that stuff will kill you, literally. Uh -huh. Don't you know how many people have had heart attacks? Strokes, oh, yeah. That's true. high blood, low blood, no blood, kidneys failing people, hearts failing them, fear That's right. about what they don't have, yes. what they can't do. That's true. But God wants us to trust him. He wants us to get to know him. Yes. He wants you to have a relationship with him. We spend a lot of time, just think about this. 
We spend a lot of time trying to build relationships, establish relationships with man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just think if you put all that effort in getting to all know right. him. Spend a lot of time doing that. You want people to accept you. You want people to love you. You want them to care about you. Look after you like you look after them. You don't have to do that with God. It's an automatic thing. You just got to get to know him. And that's what the world is missing. They don't realize that they have a God that really does care about them. Contrary to what the world says. They'll try to tell you because you don't have Christ in your life that you don't need anything. They'll try to tell you because of the things that you've done, God hates you. But that's not the case. We have a God that's full of love. And his arms are stretched out ready to meet your need. Ready to receive you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. And a lot of times we have people that or unbelievers, Christ haven't come into their life yet. And you got some people that are in an alone place. They're tired of being the way that they are. That's right. That's right. And their souls are crying out and longing for something better. And they don't really know what it is. But you know what they start doing? They start talking to God. Mm -hmm. Amen. They might not use his name, but they'll say, I'm tired of being like this. I don't want to be like this. Get me out of this. Yes, and just as sure as God want to do that thing for them. Yes, he and he's listening. Don't let anybody tell you that God don't hear sinners because he does. He got to hear your cry to bring you out. God is concerned not just about us. But he's concerned about your children. He's concerned about your grandchildren. He's concerned about the co-workers that you are around. Those that you have been ministering to, talking about the Lord. He's concerned about that. Right. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. And Jacob was left alone. It's good to be alone sometimes. It's good to be alone. That way you can even think on your ways. Lord, what can I do better? I'm not asking for things, but what can I do for you? There's a longing in each one of us to please our maker. There's something on the inside that says, Lord, it's got to be something better. We have sought for love. We have sought for attention from everybody but the Lord. All right now. And he's been ready, want to give it to you. Yes. But we're going to people, expecting them to give you what only he can give. He can be with you when nobody else is around. He will talk to you. You all heard Sister Sherry's testimony. He will talk to you when you're alone. She wasn't even talking to her sister. She was alone. And God said, why not? God speaks. And if he can tell you something as simple as that, just imagine if you have develop your relationship what he get you to know yes. Good the things he speak to you yes. about you yes. Yes. oh yeah you're gonna see again That's right. oh yeah look we got sister Terry in here I'm telling you sister Terry came in here with a cane mm. yes. and I mean sick death was on sister Terry That's right. And I mean to tell you, she started coming and God built her up. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Took her through things that she didn't know she was going to have to go through. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, and the sister was pressing. She was coming to prayer. Every time the doors opened, she was here. That's true. Yes. That's true. 
When they weren't open, she was passing by the building and still do it today. Let me see if somebody that. Right, right. But God watches things like that. Yes, yes. yes And before you know it, he'll give you an increase. Yes. That sister don't walk with a cane no more. I'm talking about don't have a cane no more. That's right. That's right. And I thank God for that. Those are the type of things God wants you to hold on to that. If he did it for you once, he don't stop. He'll do it again and again and again and again. That's right. Amen. He's done some great things for us. Yes. Yes. And he told Jacob here, look, the angel said it, but that message was from God. As a prince, thou hast prevailed. You have the victory. Speak accordingly. Don't speak against what God. Oh, I'm tired. I'm weak. Uh uh. I have the victory. Let the weak say, I am. I am. Say, everybody, I am. Hallelujah. Say what God said. If you don't know what he said, read your Bible. Read your Bible to find out what he said concerning your life. Yes, yes. Concerning the way he want to bring you. That's right. See, God has a path. It's a journey we're on, y'all. Yes. And there's a way that he want to take you so you can get to know him. Don't worry about people. I'm telling you, you cannot be concerned about people. It's about having a relationship with him. And these other relationships, either God will separate you, hallelujah, because he'll do it, or he'll put some stuff together that's supposed to be. That's right, that's right. I don't care if it's with your family. Those relationships, you give your best to God, and before you know it, he'll start mending and putting things together. Yes, he will. Yes, he Here will. it is. He did it for Jacob. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's true. God had a whole plan. That's true. And his plan don't fail. None. Look, sometimes we have a plan, and it don't work. So we say, you know what? We're going to plan B. Right, right. But when God has a plan, all you got to do is stick to it. Yes, right? yes. Hold on to the plan. And so here it is again as I close. And Jacob was left alone. He was in a quiet place where he could hear God. Right. Where God could talk to him and he could talk to God. Yes. And sure as Jacob got his blessing, didn't the Bible say it? Verse 26, he said, and he said, let me go for the day breaking. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. That's how you got to be, Lord. I'm not letting go. You tell that devil, I'm not letting go of God. I'm not going to cast away my confidence. I'm not going to be sad. I'm not going to be sick. I'm not going to be down and out. I'm not going to hurt anymore. I'm healed. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Say that. Yes, yes, yes. He said, I will not let thee go. No matter what you're going through. You can be disliked. You can be hated without a cause. You can do everything you can trying to make people happy and please them. Don't let go of God trying to please people. That's right. That's right. Don't give up on God trying to please people, worried about what they're going to say. Right. Don't even worry about what they can do to you. That's the word. Because people will threaten you. They'll try to hurt you. They'll use your own words against you. That's true. Yes. That's true. But God don't want us to be concerned about that. We're, be concerned about that relationship with him. Oh, because just as sure as you talk to him, he talks back. Yes, he does. 
And like somebody brought out the other day, he don't yell, he don't talk over you. He gonna wait till you get quiet. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. And then before you know it, he'll say just one word. You done went on a tangent, on a rant. And he gonna say one word to you, maybe two. Be still. Delight yourself. Yes, yes, yes. He don't do a whole lot of talking when you all worked up. He don't do that. I'm telling you right now. You know what? You will not hear him. That's true. That's so ain't no need of talking. <laughs> ain't no need of talking to somebody that's going to talk over you. Right. God don't do it when you're worked up and you're going on and carrying on. Y'all heard my testimony. I was just to go on one night. And God is really helping me because you want things to go the way you feel like they should go. You want people to carry out the way you want them to carry out. And you can get to going and get all out of God, get all out of character. Your spirit and everything will go bad. As a believer, you ready to fight now. And God will let you do all of that and get all worked up. And then I'll tell you, go apologize. Amen. You were wrong. Oh, See, yeah. God don't let you get away with stuff. Your parents, your brother, your sister, uh -huh. they might let you get away with some things, but God is gonna be, He gonna be honest with you, and He's not afraid of telling you the truth. That's right. Amen. He's not worried about you pulling the strike on him. Yes, it's true. If God tells you, if I tell her the truth, she ain't gonna want me no more. That's not God. Because he knows he's the best thing. That's right. He knows that all he does is good for us. Mm -hmm. So he's not intimidated by your words. Lord, I'm just going to give up because it seems like you ain't doing it quick enough. He don't say, okay, well, let me go ahead and then right. this girl, I'll tell you, she something else. He don't do like that. Right. Right. My husband might do that, but God don't do that. He gonna say no. You gonna stay in that test until you get it right. That's right. That's true. And it's all for your good. It's not to work against you. It's that not to hurt really you. Good. God That's know right. how to allow things to come your way to work humility down in you, mm -hmm. to work patience and long suffering, oh, yeah. love and kindness. Oh, yeah. she knows how. Cause when things not going your way, we can get mean. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right? You have any children that when stuff don't go their way, oh man, they'll cause a strike, run away. You won't hear from them for weeks. But God is not like that. He's not worried about that. You'll be back. <laughs> you coming back. And you better hope my arms are stretched out. They were telling me a story and I'm going to wrap this up. They were saying we went to a picnic, my husband and my brother-in-law and his partner, we went to a picnic and they were telling us that um, um, Joey was about nine or 11 years old, baby. Mm -hmm. And Joey called himself in a runaway. And the parents said, okay, you go ahead. Pack this bag. bag. Walked on out the house. With, <laughs> with his backpack on the stick. Now, y'all done seen that uh, cartoon that looked like that. Right. You got this little bitty stick and got your little handkerchief tied with your clothes in it. He done walked out the house and left. And the parents knew, oh, he'll be back. They did not run him down. They didn't chase him. Oh, don't do that. Come on, we love you. They didn't do that. He said they shut to the door. And I mean to tell you, but guess what? He realized, what am I doing? I can't live without them. I can't take care of myself. Isn't that something? That's how God is. He'll sit, he'll sit back and watch you throw your little tantrum. Mm -hmm. And then guess what you find yourself doing? Going right back. Lord, right. 
forgive me, you right. I don't have no business feeling like this because you didn't hurry up and do it when I asked. Right. Pastor said it. He was the type of person when his parents said it, oh, it was good as done. Matter of fact, when they did it, it wasn't no thrill in it because the thrill was them saying yes. Right, right. That's right. And that's the place that God wants us to be. When he said, yeah. you delight then. Don't wait till you get it and start shouting. He wants you to delight because he promised it to you. Again, that's an area that God helps me in because I was the total opposite. If you tell me you're going to do it, I'm going to be, Mama, Mama, wait, Mama, you ain't did it yet. But God don't want us to be like that. He wants us to be patient. And while we're being patient, you just go on doing what you're supposed to do. Right. And before you know it, it's happening for you. That's, true. That's the type of God we serve. Look, he wants to do the things that we ask when it's according to his will. Right. When you're saying, Lord, I don't want to be sad. I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be mad. I don't want to have a bad attitude. That's it. He don't want that for you either because that's not him. Those spirits are not of God. Amen. The enemy will fill you with all of that stuff. And that's why it's so important to come be taught. Yes. That you don't have to yield to how you used to be. Right. Maybe you were mean. Maybe you were a pushover. Right. You don't have to be what you used to be. Right. The Bible says if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Yes. 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 And that's a sure thing. That's a promise. Yes. So we're going to ask you to stand to your feet. We thank God for the word tonight. Let's give God a hand praise. We hope that you all benefited from the message tonight. Get along with God. That's right. Talk to him about what you're going through. Don't be so busy calling everybody, That's right. That's telling right. everybody about what you got going on. Talk right. to the Lord yeah. because he's going to lead you the right way. And guess what? Sometimes when you start talking to him, he'll just get quiet. That's true. He'll give you no response right away. Right you may have to wait. But when you're waiting, let your spirit be right. Lord, I believe. I know you're going to do it. You said it. I believe it. And when you get like that, when you get to that place where it really don't bother you, when you're really not wary, when you're really trusting him, yes. here he comes. And it happens when you weren't even looking for it. That's how God moved. And you look back and you say, oh my God, here it is. I had, a, I had something going on and I'm not even dealing with it anymore. Yes. And that's, that's the place that God wants every believer to be at. When it happened, you knew I knew you were going to do it, Lord. Can you imagine how proud his parents were or how glad his parents were when they just saw him get excited because they said they were going to do it? Mm -hmm. Don't you get excited? you like, oh, I got to make this happen for them because they too excited. They trust in me. Right. And you want to do it for them because you know they confidences in what you said. Yes, right. That's exactly how God is. Yes. When your confidence is there and you're saying, Lord, you said it, I believe it. I'm not going to doubt. I won't let go of your promises. Yes. He delights Thank and you. he move in right on time. Yes, he does. Let's give God a hand praise tonight. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. Bless us to hide your word in our hearts that we don't sin against you. Help us to meditate in your word day and night, even when we leave this place, as we're laying in our beds all throughout the night. Let our minds be on you and what you said. Yes, Lord. We ask you to meet every need tonight, God. You know the need. You, and we ask word. you to bless your people all yes. throughout this land. You, those that are looking for a miracle, those that are looking for a healing, those that are asking for deliverance, let it be done. Yes. We look to you tonight and we believe, we believe, knowing that you are the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, our not God. just their God, but you're our God. God. You're our Father and you hear us when we pray. Hallelujah. So as we get along, speak to our hearts. Oh my. Give us your word, oh God, that we may be like you. 
conform in your image. These things we ask and pray in your name. One more time, let's give God a hand praise. Thank God for you all sitting so patiently tonight on a Friday night. Thank God, hallelujah, that none of you stayed home and laid in the bed and just ate all night and watched TV and thought about this and that. You chose to be in the house of the Lord, That's and it's right. a beautiful That's thing. Right. If your right. plans got canceled, be thankful. Glory. Because God may be preserving you from something. That's right. Amen. He could have a whole other plan. That's, true. That's the type of God we serve. So we thank God for everybody that's here tonight.